the standard way of thinking about the rise of finance overstates the influence of, of the financial sector. And the story that I tell is one where policymakers routinely um, stumbled into solutions for problems that were uh, immediate and pressing. Uh, and they, you know, they were essentially, in, in many instances, seeking to uh, avoid taking responsibility for um, political decisions in the context of uh, increased scarcity of resources. So this is uh, a period, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, beginning in the late 60s and 1970s, when resources in the US economy are, are becoming much more restricted. Uh, you know, this is a kind of stalling of post-war growth. And with that, you have uh, increased distributional conflict over you know, essentially how we're going to divide up resources that are, are, are now in much uh, more finite supply. And so uh, essentially the uh, move to deregulate the financial sector comes in part out of policymakers' uh, desire to avoid directly taking responsibility for making decisions about how to allocate capital between competing social priorities. But in fact, you know, what occurred when the financial markets were deregulated was not the imposition of, of discipline as, as was expected. It was uh, a actual loosening of discipline. In a sense, what happened was we, uh, and, and this was a, a kind of thing that wasn't well understood at the time, but um, you know, effectively uh, financial markets were deregulated and the uh, supply of credit in the economy expanded dramatically. Uh, and this essentially uh, made some of those distributional questions that had set this thing in motion much less contested than they otherwise would have been. I think it became clear in the crisis that distributional tensions had not been resolved. They, they, you know, the, the, the distributional uh, issues that started to emerge in this country in the late 60s and the 70s uh, had never satisfactorily been been resolved. They'd simply been deferred and displaced in, into an indefinite future. And I think part of what uh, we saw with the crisis was suddenly it was apparent that uh, those distributional tensions were still very much alive, that they were just barely under the surface. And you know, all it took was uh, a kind of economic shock to bring them right back into plain view. So. You know, it's a question of actually going back and having that debate as a society about how do we deal with distributional issues, how do we sort this out. Um, those are the questions that I think remain to be answered and that are, you know, quite quite difficult ones, but quite important questions that we need to face in in the current moment. You know, we really, as a society have to face what it means to live in an economy that doesn't generate affluence in the way that it did in the immediate post-war decades.